about 12:20 a.m. Eastern is when that rocket started to go vertical. There's usually a pause right at that point you saw there as they continue to make sure that everything is proceeding as expected before they bring the rocket fully upright to where it now stands today, ready to launch the Gozu satellite coming up in 37 minutes. What happens next? We are truly, as I mentioned, um, waiting and watching for the first solar up array stage one deploy. Um, and that happens about four and three quarter, launch plus four and three quarter, launch plus five hours. And the reason that that's so important is this spacecraft needs power to survive. If there's any issues, um, you know, and, and so it's, it's very important to make sure that we have a really good uh, solar array uh, deployment. And with that deployment, we have five main um, panels. Um, and with this stage one, we're then going to go through and deploy four for the five. Um, the next big item comes approximately two days away from launch, and that's when we kick off our uh, liquid Apogee engine burns. So SpaceX is going to take us only so far. Uh, we need to get, as you know, to geosynchronous orbit, which is 22,260 some miles. Um, in order for us to do that, we have to have five separate burns over a 14 day period that will then get us into the orbit uh, that we need to be in. Um, and they will range, uh, we have LAE-1 start, as I mentioned, it'll be starting two days after. Um, and then the last one will be probably around the July 8th timeframe. So those are the main things that we're gonna be looking for, uh, if you can imagine in the first two to three weeks. And our thanks again to <clears throat> Pam Calderwood. Again, she's the Deputy Program Manager for Lockheed Martin in the GOES-U program. We're now less than 30 minutes from the planned liftoff of that spacecraft, GOES-U. T-minus 29 minutes, 13 seconds and counting. The next major fueling milestone coming up is at the T-minus 18 minutes and 30 second mark. That's when second stage liquid oxygen load will begin.
currently at T minus 26 minutes, 14 seconds and counting. I mentioned the next big fueling milestone will start at about T minus 18 minutes and 30 seconds for second stage liquid oxygen load. For those who've been frequent watchers of Falcon 9 missions, you'll know that the big vent precedes second stage LOX load. That is no different for a Falcon Heavy rocket. Slightly different timing, though. Should come up right about the T minus 22 minute 30 second mark. Want to thank the more than 10,000 of you who are joining with us live this afternoon. If you haven't already, certainly appreciate it if you hit the like button to allow some more folks to find this live coverage as we continue to roll merrily along towards the plan T0 liftoff of the Falcon Heavy coming up at T minus 25 minutes, 16 seconds and counting. T minus 22 minutes, 25 seconds and counting. You can see the big vent is now underway.
now currently T minus 20 minutes, 44 seconds and counting. Just about two minutes away from second stage lock load beginning. Stage two, fuel load complete. That call from SpaceX. They have concluded loading RP-1 rocket-grade kerosene on board the second stage of the Falcon Heavy rocket. Stage two, lock float has started. And as you heard from that call out, second stage lock load has now begun, coming up just about in line with the conclusion of that big vent. Currently T minus 17 minutes, 14 seconds and counting. We're continuing to keep our eyes very closely on the weather and that march of clouds that you can see creeping its way on over to Florida's space coast. The presence of anvil clouds was something that meteorologists with the 45th Weather Squadron were watching closely as they were coming into this launch opportunity today. And that continues to be the case. Looking at views of the cloud actually from the current Goes East satellite. The one that will be replaced in service, primary service by Goes U once it's able to launch and be certified and all the checkouts are complete. So we're looking back in the opposite direction from where most of our cameras are pointed. You can see the presence of Anvil Cloud making its way eastward, what you just saw in the satellite imagery. So we're now approaching the 16 minute mark before planned liftoff of the Falcon Heavy rocket. Of course, the weather team, the meteorologists with the 45th Weather Squadron working very hard to make their real-time assessments of this and 
course, the rest of the full weather picture. See if they are in a good position to launch the Falcon Heavy rocket with the GOES-U satellite. course one of the things that they are tracking is not only the presence of lightning itself but the rocket's ability to generate its own lightning and with an anvil or a certainly a detached anvil cloud that still holds a charge from the thunderstorm that produced it that could be very bad for the launch vehicle and so that's something that they are continuing to track as we progress closer and closer to the planned liftoff of this vehicle. Now currently T minus 14 minutes, 46 seconds and counting. apologize for that uh, sudden outburst there is a, a very excited crowd gathered over at the banana creek viewing site near the apollo center part of the kennedy space center visitor complex uh, very neat building if you have the opportunity to visit kscvc where you can see a full Saturn V rocket end to end, as well as a lot of great exhibits uh, commemorating the history of the Apollo program. All those Saturn V rockets launching from this pad that we're hoping to see a Falcon Heavy lift off from, 39A. Currently T minus 12 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. As we are coming into our final minutes of the count, we've talked about the timeline of the spacecraft once it separates from the Falcon Heavy rocket, a bit about the Falcon Heavy itself. Let's dig a little deeper into the instruments that are on board the GOES-U spacecraft. Some of them facing the Earth, some of them facing towards the sun and out into space, both, or I should say all seven of which, act in concert to help improve life and the safety of us here on Earth. So I want to go to another one of our conversations with a member of the Lockheed Martin team to learn a little bit more about the instruments that are on board the GOES-U spacecraft. Hi, my name is Alana Nifomaseno and I'm the senior manager for the integration and test group uh, that integrated and tested the GOES-U satellite. We have a model of that here, so I'm just going to kind of walk through some of the cool features on here. Uh, this is the magnetometer. Uh, this is a boom that deploys uh, when the satellite gets out on orbit. Uh, it deploys out about 28 feet, so not quite to scale, <laughs> or not quite the right size here. Um, up here on the top of the vehicle, this black platform is called our EPP. That's our Earth pointing platform. So this top side of the satellite is what points back to Earth. This is our ABI, uh, the baseline imager. 
and then GLM, our lightning mapper. Um, so those are what's looking back to see uh, weather down on, on the earth. Over here on the back side, uh, you can see this little box. This is called SICE. Uh, so that's our suite of sensors. This is the antenna wing assembly, which helps us to get data um, to and from the satellite. Uh, and then over here uh, is the big solar array wing assembly, as well as the SPP. So the SPP is the sun pointing platform. So that has multiple instruments on it uh, that look out at the sun out in space and, and look at for space weather. And then the solar array itself obviously is what provides power uh, when we're out there on orbit. And then maybe some other cool things to look at down here. This is the LAE, the liquid apogee engine. Uh, that helps us to get, once we drop off the rocket out in space, this helps us to get out to our final orbit and geostationary. And then we have some smaller thrusters around the vehicle, some five pounders here on the bottom, and then some smaller LTRs, uh, which help us for station keeping and just small positioning when we're out there on orbit throughout the life of the vehicle. And these are, I'm guessing, propellant tanks here, these golden tubes? Right, yeah, propellant tanks here on the side. And then you also have one buried in the center of the vehicle there that you can't see. And about how long did it take to bring the spacecraft together once you, you know, really started working on it? Um, it's probably two to three years to integrate um, the whole vehicle once it gets, you know, at this assembly level. That's the part that my team does, yeah. It takes quite a while to run it through all its paces. We, um, you know, have to obviously integrate it and then do a bunch of testing, put it through all the environments that it's going to see during launch and then all the environments that it'll see out in space as well and just confirm that it's definitely going to work and meet those mission life requirements for the customer. And our thanks again to a lot for spending part of the day yesterday talking with us about the Gozu spacecraft that she and many others at Lockheed Martin helped bring together. Currently T minus eight minutes, 45 seconds and counting. Coming up our next fueling milestone will be the chill down of the 27 Falcon Heavy first stage Merlin 1D engines. It's coming up now in a minute and a half, the T minus seven minute mark. Stage one, fuel load complete. And with that call out, all three Spacecraft is on internal power. All three boosters on the Falcon Heavy first stage are now full up with all the RP-1 or rocket grade kerosene they need. As we continue to track the weather here, now eight minutes out from the planned liftoff, want to keep an eye not just in front of us, but also, of course, behind us. Those clouds that we were and are watching continue to linger around here on the Space Coast. But unfortunately, they are pushing eastward, something that the 45th Weather Squadron meteorologists are undoubtedly also keeping a very close eye on and discussing the possible positive Y fuel load complete impacts. Negative Y, fuel load complete. Currently at T-minus 5 minutes, 58 seconds and counting. We are approaching the start of the strong back retract sequence. 
But before we hit that mark, first off, I want to thank the now more than 27,000 of you who are joining with us live this afternoon. If you haven't already, we'd certainly appreciate it if you could hit that like button for us to bring in some more folks into our live coverage as we are now just five and a half minutes away from the planned liftoff of the Falcon Heavy rocket. In anticipation of that, let's go ahead and take a look at where this Falcon Heavy is going to fly once it leaves Launch Complex 39A. Falcon Heavy is a dynamic song and dance of rocketry, so once it leaves the pad, of course this is a satellite heading to a geosynchronous transfer orbit, so it's going to be heading basically due east once it leaves the pad here. But the two side boosters, they're not landing on drone ships. They're going to be performing a flip maneuver that boosts back burn. Falcon Heavy tanks are pressurizing for strong back retract. And we'll land back at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station at landing zones 1 and 2. So for those who are in the Central Florida area and especially in the vicinity of Florida Space Coast, Heads up, because the sonic booms are loud, and they will catch you off guard if you're not ready for them. Strong back lower has started. And with that call out, SpaceX now proceeding into the strong back retract sequence. Starts with the clamp arms underneath the payload fairings opening up, and then that transporter erector, which you can see the top of just to the right of those payload fairings, will recline about a degree and a half away from the Falcon Heavy rocket. Stays in that position until liftoff, which point it pulls back in a much more rapid fashion. NLM, it's the LD on the NLM net with a final status check. LD, everything's looking good on our end. Copy that, thank you. And as you heard, another check in with the launch director for NASA LSP, Denton Gibson. LD. NY Lockhead on one. LD. NASA is go for launch. Copy, thank you. And that's one important check mark. PY Lockhead complete. Before the planned liftoff of this Falcon Heavy rocket, Denton Gibson, as the launch director for LSP, has given his go for launch, representing the NASA side of the equation. SpaceX launch director will give their go for launch coming up at T minus 45 seconds out. We're now less than three minutes from the planned launch of this Falcon Heavy rocket, getting ready to send up the GOES-U satellite on behalf of NASA and NOAA. This will be the 10th Falcon Heavy to launch to date. Stage one, launch load complete. And we are very close to the conclusion of propellant load on the Falcon Heavy rocket, now just about two and a half minutes before liftoff. Stage two, lock load complete. And with that call, the Falcon Heavy is now fully fueled and raring to go. We certainly appreciate you being with us for the duration of this launch countdown as we are now less than two minutes away from the liftoff of this Falcon Heavy rocket. I promise we'll come back to the live chat on the other side of liftoff, but for now, let's go ahead and continue to keep our focus on the Falcon Heavy rocket and the remainder of the count. Ground gas close up. As you heard and you see with that venting, we have reached the ground gas closeout stage. Now minute 20 before planned liftoff. One minute. Falcon Heavy is in startup. Forty-five. 
launch director, go for launch. And with that, the SpaceX launch director has given their go for launch, adding to NASA's green light. We are now just a little more than 30 seconds away from the liftoff of the 10th Falcon Heavy rocket. T minus 30 seconds. Twenty seconds. Fifteen seconds. And here we go. In ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Engine ignition and liftoff of the Falcon Heavy rocket on the NASA NOAA Goes You mission. Falcon Heavy has cleared the tower, and the fourth and final GOES satellite is on its way to geostationary orbit. up on a few different events in rapid succession at T plus two minutes and 25 seconds the side booster engines will cut off for Biko they will separate three seconds later then the side booster boost back burn begins at T plus two minutes and 44 seconds that boost back burn concluding at T plus three minutes and 53 seconds finally First stage manage a cutoff for Miko just before the four minute mark at T plus three minutes 56 seconds. Stage separation just before the four minute mark. And then the start of the Merlin vacuum engine on the upper stage at T plus four minutes and six seconds. Now coming up on Miko. And there you see Biko. Booster separation. Side booster separation confirmed. And a great and actual. vantage point from the Falcon Heavy onboard cameras. And my goodness. PYNY boost back startup. There's the start of that boost back burn as seen by P. Carson's tracking camera. Those two side boosters will be making their way back towards landing zones one and two at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Again, if you are in Central Florida... All vehicles are following nominal trajectories. Be prepared for the sonic boom as those boosters are making their way back through the atmosphere. Now a little more than three minutes into flight. This boost back burn has less than a minute to go. some great tracking from Pete here. We're now just a few seconds away from the conclusion of that boost back NY burn. boost back shut down. TY boost Miko. back shut down. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition.
all good call-outs, all good events from SpaceX here. That Merlin vacuum engine now powering the upper stage as the first stage side boosters continue their trajectory. All vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. Nominally. Bearing separation confirmed. Heard from SpaceX. Coming up the next event as we cross the five minute mark and this flight is coming up at T plus six minutes and 36 seconds. The side booster entry burn will begin. The burn lasting about 15 seconds. Still keeping close tabs on these boosters as they make their way back towards Florida's space coast. Those pulses that you're seeing there on the side boosters, those are the cold gas thrusters helping to adjust the attitude of the side boosters, making sure they're following the correct trajectory as they make their way back towards... H1 FTS is saved. LZ1 and LZ2. The center booster that you saw powering the rocket that was the last to separate from the second stage that will be expended on this mission. Now a little more than six minutes into flight. Less than 30 seconds now on the start of that first stage entry burn on the side boosters. How about 10 seconds? DYNY entry burn startup. We see a good start of that entry burn by all accounts. These boosters flying for the first time and DYNY entry burn shut down. Certainly earning DYNY FTS is saved. Earning their stripes with this mission. Now a little more than seven minutes to flight. All vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. Good call from SpaceX as we're coming up on the start of the landing burn. Coming up less than a minute. It'll start at approximately T plus 7 minutes and 53 seconds. NY transonic. Stage 2 FTS is saved. You can see those hypersonic grid fins also helping to provide some stability and steering for those side boosters. Coming up on the start of their landing burn. EY NY landing burn. Stage 2 is in terminal guidance. DYNY landing light deploy. DYNY landing confirmed. See go. We are with this mission. Looking at the launch timeline now that the rocket has lifted off and it is now being, well, has been powered by the second stage, that Merlin vacuum engine currently in a coast phase. As you see here with the telemetry data on the right hand side of your screen, following that track, the Merlin vacuum engine will reignite for the start of its second burn at T plus 26 minutes and 19 seconds. That burn lasting a little bit more than a minute, concluding at T plus 27 minutes and 46 seconds. And then it goes into an exceedingly long coast phase before that second stage engine reignites 
at T plus four hours, 21 minutes, 18 seconds. That third and final burn of the upper stage before satellite deployment wraps up. T plus four hours, 21 minutes, 51 seconds and counting. And then finally, the fourth and final goes you satellite will be deployed. T plus four hours, 30 minutes and two seconds. Martin. We are truly, as I mentioned, um, waiting and watching for the first solar up array stage one deploy. Um, and that happens about four and three quarter, launch plus four and three quarter, launch plus five hours. And the reason that that's so important is this spacecraft needs power to survive. If there's any issues, um, you know, and, and so it's, it's very important to make sure that we have a really good uh, solar array. Uh, deployment and with that deployment we have five main um, panels um, and with this stage one we're then going to go through and deploy four for the five. Um, the next big item comes approximately two days away from launch and that's when we kick off our uh, liquid Apogee engine burns. So SpaceX is going to take us only so far uh, we need to get, as you know, to geosynchronous orbit, which is 22,260 some miles. Um, in order for us to do that, we have to have five separate burns over a 14 day period that will then get us into the orbit uh, that we need to be in. Um, and they will range, uh, we have LAE1 start, as I mentioned, it'll be starting two days after. Um, and then the last one will be probably around the July 8th time frame. Launching in 2032. The ABI stands for the Advanced Baseline Imager, and uh, L3 Harris has designed and built that at our Fort Wayne, Indiana facility. And what the ABI does is it scans the Earth uh, every 10 minutes across 16 channels or 16 color bands uh, from the visible uh, bands to the infrared bands. And then that data is sent back down to Earth to our, our GOZAR Enterprise ground system where that data is actually processed into products that are sent out to forecasters that are used for uh, predicting severe weather and, uh, and, uh, and uh, monitoring environmental disasters. The majority of the subsystems that we use on the ABI are being reused on uh, GXI or GOXO Imager. Uh, what we are doing is we'll be upgrading the electronics. We will also be adding two additional bands to the GXI. So there'll be two spectral bands that will be added for low-level water vapor. Uh, and then there are seven of the, uh, the older bands, the previous bands, that will get increased resolution. So most importantly, in the visible bands, we're going down to 250 meter resolution, which is going to really enhance and sharpen the pictures of of the, uh, the weather that we're seeing and the cloud formation and the oceans and everything else that, else that the ABI uh, observes. And that I
currently T minus, or excuse me, T plus 22 minutes, 40 seconds and counting. Certainly a celebratory mood here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center as this mission is off to the races, but still quite a bit of work left to take place before most folks get to breathe a sigh of relief. As mentioned, GOES-U deployment doesn't happen until T plus 4 hours, 30 minutes, and 2 seconds. And then there's still quite a bit of work, as we heard from Pam Calderwood, managing the process of the deployment of the solar panels. Four out of five of those panels will deploy so they can start powering up the batteries on the GOES-U spacecraft. We are coming up on the burn of the second stage, SES-2. That's T plus 26 minutes and 19 seconds. That burn lasting just uh, about a minute and a half in total. Now T plus 26 minutes, 24 seconds and counting. You see that second stage burn now getting underway. Again, this burn lasting a little more than a minute. Concluding at T plus 27 minutes and 46 seconds. its way over the coast of Africa, approaching it. We've got the onboard cameras back. Its burn has less than 10 seconds remaining. As, of course, the live telemetry information and the track from NASA and SpaceX in anticipation of the deployment of the GOES-U satellite coming up just before 10 o'clock Eastern. T plus four hours, 30 minutes and two seconds. And as always, folks, be good to yourselves, be good to others, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.